Welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing about loop control statements break, continue and go to. Let's try to understand break with an example. Let's write a program to check if a number is prime or not. A number is said to be prime if it can only be divided by 1 and the number itself. If a number is not prime, we call it as a composite number. 1 is neither prime nor composite. For example, take the number 91. How do you find out whether it is prime or not? You should try and divide it by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In this case, 2 until 6 does not divide 91, but 7 divides 91. So we can for sure say it cannot be a prime number. But if you instruct the computer to divide 91 by 2, then you will be getting decimal values. You have to handle floating point and all that. But you have a simple alternative here. You can just use the modulo operator. Here if you use modulo operator, it gives the reminder that you get when you divide 91 by 2. The reminder is all you need. If it is 0, then you can say that the number divides 91. If it is not equal to 0, then you can say that it does not divide 91. So once you find a number that divides 91, you don't have to proceed any further. You can stop and say that it is not a prime. If you take the number 23, if you divide it each by 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., you have to keep doing it because none of it divides 23. And you might have to check maybe until 22 because by definition, a number is said to be prime if it divides only 1 and the number itself. So you should not consider 23. You should maybe check until n minus 1. So you are starting with 2 and you are going until n minus 1. If none of these number divides the given n, then you can conclude that it is a prime number. But do you even have to check until n minus 1? For instance, take the number 12. 12 by 2 is 6, right? That is half of 12 is 6. Definitely numbers more than 6 like 7, 8, 9. These cannot divide 12, right? So it is waste of time to check for numbers greater than half of the number. So we might only have to check until n by 2 just to save some time. But actually it's enough to check just until square root of n. This will be even more efficient. Once you have checked all the numbers from 2 until square root of n, you don't have to check for any more numbers. If you want to know the reason for this, you can check the video that I have made about this in the description box. So let's write the loop for i equal to starting with 2 until i less than or equal to square root of n. n is the number that the user enters. So if you're wondering how you can find square root of n, you can use this function if you include math.h. Square root is an inbuilt function. Just like how you include stdio.h and call printf, scanf, you can include math.h and call square root function. Inside the parenthesis, you have to give the number for which you have to find the square root. So now inside the loop, you are going to find the modulo n mod i. If it is 0, then n is not a prime number. You can conclude that a number is prime only if for all values of i, n mod i should not be equal to 0. Even for one value of i, if n mod i is 0, then the number is not a prime, right? So while you are running the loop, for certain values of i, n mod i can be 0. For certain values of i, it might not be equal to 0. Only after running the loop, you can conclude whether it is prime or not. So you have to make the computer remember what is happening inside the loop, right? Which means we need a variable for that. Let's declare i as well as a variable called is prime. Let's assign some code for is prime. We can set is prime to 1 to indicate that it is a prime number. We can set it to 0 to indicate that it is not a prime number. So what we can do here is let's first initialize is prime to 1 and assume that it is a prime number and inside the loop even if for one value of i if n mod i is 0 it is not a prime so we can set is prime to 0 here. So outside the loop we can check what is the value of is prime. If it is 1 it means that it has remained in the initial value itself. This part was never executed, which means this condition was not true at all. None of the i that we checked 
was able to divide n which means that the entered number is a prime number so in the else part if s prime is not 1 it means that it has to be 0 here for some value of i this condition was true and s prime was set to 0 which means that n is not a prime number we have to declare n as well let's complete the remainder of the program and try to run it here i have added math.h and then just asking the user to enter the value and scanning it i have added uh, the condition of n equal to 1 wherein you have to print that it is neither prime nor composite and the other logic that we discussed has been added in the else part you need this else if you don't give this else what happens if n equal to 1 it will print that it is neither prime nor composite and since we have initialized this prime as 1 it will also print that it is a prime number which is wrong so we need to put these in the else part let's run the program if you enter 6 we get the output as not a prime if you enter 13 we get the output as prime so it's working fine let's take the example of 36 when you enter the number 36 it will start with i equal to 2 and check for 36 mod 2 which is 0 and so it will set is prime to 0 and then it will check for 36 mod 3 36 mod 4 5 up to 36 mod 6 because square root of 36 is 6 but do we have to do all these checking so once we have found out that 36 mod 2 is 0 we don't even have to check for all these numbers right if n mod i is 0 then we have to set is prime to 0 and stop the loop it is totally meaningless to continue executing the loop when you have found that it is not a prime number it is total waste of time imagine what happens if you enter the number like 6 5 8 4 3 6 a six digit number in the first case itself you will find out that it is not prime even then it will be running the loop for a lot more numbers so is it possible to stop the loop in the middle yes that is why we have the break statement you can just give break within curly braces here if the execution comes here then the loop stops immediately so i think you now can understand the importance of break here say if you enter 9 9 mod 2 is not equal to 0 so it increments i to 3 9 mod 3 is 0 so now it sets as prime to 0 and stops the loop it is just the same program i have not even added break now i have just put a printf statement here to print the value of i after for loop just for you to understand how break works if i run the program and enter the number 96 as you know it is not a prime number you can see that the value of i after the loop is 10 and it is saying that it is not a prime let's now give a break here and execute this again if you give the number 96 you can see that the value of i after the loop is 2 it means that the loop has been executed only once we have initialized i to 2 and it has not changed at all so basically break is just a keyword used in c to break out of a loop if the break statement is executed following the if condition the execution just comes out of the loop immediately Usually break is given within an if condition. Giving without if doesn't make sense because, because the loop will immediately break each time. Say for example if this for is enclosed within another for, what happens when the break is executed? We know that it comes out of this block of code. So the execution comes here and then it goes and continues executing the outer for loop. So if you have a break within nested loops, it only comes out of the loop in which it is present. People often get confused what happens to break in nested loops. It will not come out of all the loops. It will only come out of the loop in which it is present. You might have learnt about break in the switch statement. We are talking about the same break. So whenever this break is executed, it just comes out of this block of code. So only thing you have to remember is that break helps us to come out of the block in which it is present it might be a loop it might be a nested loop or it might be a switch case it just comes out of the block in which it is present sometimes people will use while of one for executing an infinite while loop mostly it is used for polling in embedded systems but you can also find it to be used in normal programs 
So why is this an infinite loop? Because in C, 0 denotes false and any non-zero number denotes true. So 1 denotes true here. So the loop will be executed forever. In order to stop such loops, we use an if condition and break to come out of the loop. Let's say you have to find the smallest multiple of 7 greater than n. You are asking the user to enter some value n. Say if the user enters 10, don't include 10. Start from 11. 11 is not a multiple of 7, 12 is not, 13 is not, but 14 is. So the output should be 14. Start with n. Depending on the value of n, you have to execute the loop different number of times. For example, if the user enters 20, the answer is 21. So I think in this case, it is better to use while of 1. Let's try to write a program for that. While of 1, you have to start with the next value of n. So I'm just using the increment operator here, plus plus n. Mod 7 equal to equal to 0 means you have to break. This is a pre-increment operator which means that before performing the operation first the value of n is incremented. Only then the operation is performed. The loop continues to execute until break is encountered. So when you enter the value of 10 plus plus n means n is incremented to 11. It checks for 11 mod 7. It is not equal to 0. Again the loop executes then plus plus n is 12. So 12 mod 7 is also not equal to 0. Again the loop executes then it becomes 13 and then when it checks for 14, 14 mod 7 is 0. So break is executed and the loop is exited. So you just have to print the value of n outside the loop. So I have just added the code here just to get the input from the user and if I run the code and enter 10, I am getting the answer as 14. If I enter 35, I am getting the answer as 42 because we are not including n here. We are only starting from plus plus n. You can try these problems. I am not publishing the answers for these anywhere because I want to encourage you to think on your own and write the program. Like break, continue is a keyword. If you give continue inside a loop, if the execution comes here, the remaining code in the loop is skipped and continues with the next iteration. And also it always most probably goes inside an if condition because it doesn't make sense to give it separately. Then the code after that will never get executed. Let's write a program to print all numbers less than 100 except 15 using continue. So all you have to do is write a for loop starting from i equal to 1, i less than or equal to 100, i plus plus. If you want to print all numbers, you can just give printf percentage %d i. But now you don't want to print the number 15, right? So what you can give is if i equal to 15, you can give continue. So what happens is i starts with 1, the numbers 1, 2, 3, etc. will be printed until 14. So when i equal to 15, continue will be executed. Printf statement will be skipped. And it directly proceeds to the next iteration of the loop. i becomes 16. Now i will be printed. Then it will be 17, 18, etc. until 100. So in this example, it is possible to do even without using continue. You just have to give if i not equal to 15, then print percentage %d i. But I just want to give a simple example to illustrate continue. Let's write a program to copy positive elements in the input array to another array and print that copied array. So now you should have an input array. We can call it as A. So let's consider an array like this. 6, minus 5, 3, 4, 8, minus 2. Let's say the output is B. 6 should be included. Minus 5 should be ignored. Then we should have 3, 4, 8 and then minus 2 should also be skipped. In order to loop through the array, you should have an iterator variable. Usually we will declare i, but you cannot use the same iterator variable for both the arrays here. See, this is the position of the array elements. This number is in the 0th position and it should be copied to the 0th position in B as well. But the first position of the input should be ignored. The element in the second position of the input should be copied to the first position in B. 
So you cannot do that with one single iterator variable. You should have two different variables for each of the array. Let's use i and j. So we should be declaring an array maybe of size 20 and then an output array of size 20 and then the iterators i, j and also you should know how many numbers the user is going to enter only then you can loop that many number of times. So let's also get the size from the user and then you should add the logic to get the size and the input array from the user using scanf. I think at this point you will be familiar with how to do this. So if you are using while loop you have to initialize the iterator variables before the loop. We can do that i equal to 0, j equal to 0. Now we have to start scanning the input array first. So while i less than size, if a of i is less than 0, you don't have to do anything. You can add a continue statement here, which means it will skip all the logic that we are going to write. So if it is coming to this point, it means that a of i is a positive number. We have to copy that to p of j. j is the looping variable for array b. So I have used b of j and you have to copy a of i to b of j and you should remember to increment i and j. But we have a problem here. It will not work properly. First both i and j are 0. i less than size is true. a of i less than 0. The condition is false because a of i is 6. Now 6 is copied to array b. And now both the values are incremented. i becomes 1 and j also becomes 1. a of i is minus 5. Minus 5 less than 0 is true. Continue is executed which means all these statements are skipped. Which means without incrementing i it is checked again. i remains 1 and we will be caught up in an infinite loop. So the flaw here is even if we encounter a negative number we have to increment i only then we can check the next number. But with the continue here incrementing i is being skipped. So before mentioning continue we have to increment i within this if condition only then it will work fine. Finally we have to print the copied array. So here I have the program. This is the logic for getting the input from the user, the size and the array and then the logic we discussed and finally we are printing the copied array. Here one more point is you only know the size of the input array. We cannot use it to print the output array because the size might differ. So how do we get the size of the output array? We just have to use j as size. Since I am going to use j as the iterator again, I have copied j to size so that I can use it in the condition here. Using j as such here is appropriate because after copying each element, j is incremented. So after copying the final element, j will be incremented which means it is perfect to use as size because in arrays, size is index of last element plus 1. So let's run the program. Let's just enter 4 numbers, 2, minus 1, 3 and minus 5. So you have the output as 2 and 3. So here instead of incrementing j and i separately you can just increment it here itself. So what the computer does is it just copies a of i into b of j. Only then it increments both i and j. So I have given the input as minus 1, 2, 3 and 4 and you have the output as 2, 3, 4. After changing to this it works the same. The difference between break and continue is that if break is executed, the control comes out of the loop abruptly. But in case of continue, the remaining code is skipped just for that one time and the control goes to the top of the loop again. So if continue is encountered multiple times inside the loop, each time the remaining code will be skipped and the control goes to the top of the loop again. Go to is also a keyword. As the name indicates, it will help us in instructing the computer to go to some other location in our program. So we obviously have to tell the computer where to go, right? That is why we use something called label. This label is not a keyword. It is just some word that we are using so that the computer can identify where to go. So we have to give this same label in some other location in our program. So whenever this go to is executed, the computer searches for this label in the program and jumps to that location and start continuing from there. 
So basically go to help says to jump to a location specified by label. So it is not necessary that this label has to be somewhere after go to. It can also be before go to. So when this go to is executed, computer searches for label throughout the program and jumps to wherever it is found. Say you are writing some loop and inside the loop you are checking for some condition. Say you are dealing with the positive values entered in an array by the user but you are encountering a negative value which means that it is an error. The user has entered an invalid value. So you can do something like go to error. Here you can do whatever logic you want to do inside the loop and outside you can have a label called error the same as the one mentioned after go to and you can print some error message for the user. So here what will happen is after doing all the logic required for the program here you have to exit or return. If you don't do that after executing the proper logic also it comes to error and execute this code as well. It's not like if you give this label it will execute only for go to. It will be executed with the flow of the program. Label is just like giving a name to this part of your program. It will anyways be executed even if you don't encounter go to during execution. Say you have to write a program to print 1 to n without using loops. You can just use go to as a loop itself. Let's see how. So first you should declare a variable called i and initialize it to 1 because 1 is the starting value. Now you can put a printf statement to print i. It will only print the number 1. So you can increment i and make it as 2. Now we want to print this again. So you can give a label here and name it as maybe loop and ask the computer to go to loop. But you don't want to go to loop once you have printed the value of n, right? So you just have to put an if condition here. If i is less than or equal to n, then go to loop and print the value of i. If not, it will just come out and execute if you have some code here. Otherwise, the program will come to an end. So whenever go to is encountered, the computer searches for the word given here inside the program and jumps to that part of the code. I have written the program here. If I enter 5, we can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 getting printed. Generally, using go to is not recommended at all because it makes the execution jump here and there, which makes it very difficult to maintain the code. By maintain, we mean that if you have written the code and if someone else comes and try to modify your code, it will be a little difficult for that person. Go to can be used to exit the nested loops. This is the only place where the programming world says that it's okay to use go to. If you use break, it will only exit from the innermost and it will continue to execute the next outer loop. But if you want to come out of all the loops at once, then you can use go to in that situation. But if you ask me, is go to the only solution in this case? No, you have some other different options like using a function or, or using an extra variable. Maybe I'll try to do a separate video about coming out of the nested loops. So in almost any situation, you can definitely avoid go to by either using break or continue or an extra variable or using it inside a function. So try to avoid using go to as much as possible in your program. So we have seen about break, continue and go to in this video. Break is used to exit from the block in which it is present. Continue keeps the remaining part of the loop and continues with the next iteration. Go to jumps to the specified label. These three are usually referred to as the loop control statements. But as we saw in this video, break is also used with switch case and go to can be used anywhere in the program. Thank you for listening.